Hey there guys, what is up? It is Red Mercy bringing you a new and first episode of my new series, Reticizes. So this is, if you're not familiar, a series I just made that I am going to be basically commentating over a fan's or sub's uh, replay that they have sent in to me, pointing out any mistakes, any pros and cons, anything they can improve on, anything they do well in. Basically, it's my criticism over your replay. So again, if you don't know, send the replay to redmercy1991 at gmail.com if you want me to possibly choose yours as you know one of the replays that I am going to commentate over. Now this isn't going to be a replay like uh, a shoutcast in a sense where I'm going to be commentating over fights you know like overall the whole gameplay and like you know, like oh my god he's going to go in he's going to get a kill holy you know blah blah blah. Not that kind of stuff this is just me criticizing your gameplay mainly. Um, so if you haven't heard or known my channel is finally partnered and uh, I just want to you know give a little congrats to all of us because obviously without you guys this would never have happened. Um, because without the subscribers, without the viewers, there would be no channel. So I just want to thank every single one of you that watched my videos. And um, let's get on with this game. So uh, while we're loading, I want to say a couple things about the series. First, when you send me a replay, there's a few things I want you to keep in mind when you send me the replay uh, through the email. First, in the, somewhere in the text, in the comments section, you know, where you can type anything you want in the email, I want you guys to write me what your YouTube name is, your summoner name, the length of the game, if you're not sure what it is, then give me you know a rough estimate. Like, is it 30 minutes or is it an hour? Is it 40 minutes? Is it 45 minutes? Somewhere, you know, maybe it's 20 minutes. I don't know. To give me a rough estimate of the uh, length of the game, I want you also to write the champion that you played in that game. And especially, I do not, I repeat, I don't, do not want you to tell me in the email whether you won or you lost that game. <clears throat> because that kind of ruins the, you know, surprise, it ruins the... Uh, I, don't know, I, I guess it kind of ruins like because I'm recording this live and like I don't know if you guys are gonna win or lose, right? Like you know, who knows what can happen, right? Maybe a big comeback, maybe it seems like you're losing, maybe you do a big comeback or vice versa, all that kind of stuff. So it's more interesting if you guys don't tell me what uh, if you win or lose the game. So to start off, this MF was this is the one we're gonna be following. We're gonna be following uh, Super Asian BX. So he started with uh, Flash Ghost, not too bad. Uh, I probably I would uh, maybe recommend Flash. Uh, exhaust simply due to because her passive is kind of like if you play her right you should have it on quite a you know quite often and uh, that's kind of her escape in a sense and she does have that e skill she can use to help escape so usually you have a flash uh, ghost on someone like Ash who has no escape necessarily um, but you know MF flash or uh, flash ghost is definitely not a bad idea because uh, she really doesn't have anything like a quirky has for example you know the teleport or Vayne who has roll plus invisibility or uh, Tristano who has a jump. So definitely uh, Ghost Flash is not a bad choice. Um, neither is Flash Exhaust. So keep that in mind. Usually champions that don't have a jump kind of ability, you do actually want to run f uh, Flash Ghost. And champions that do, you usually want to run Exhaust go or Flash. <clears throat> Alright, so there's one main thing I want to point out right now. So I'm guessing from the looks of this, MF is going to be middle. Now, if this, I'm pretty sure that's correct. So that's kind of odd that Jax is going to be bottom. I'd expect Kale to be mid. I expect Jax to be top, and I expect MF with Tarek bottom. That's what it should be, in my opinion. And uh, now she started with the Doran's blade. Now I don't exactly agree with this for two reasons. Well, not two reasons. Well, for two. Well, here, okay. Here's some. Here's the reasons why I wouldn't. I wouldn't agree with it. The reason that right now I don't agree with it is since uh, he is going to be or he or she is going to be middle. Obviously, they're not going to have support with them, so they're not going to have much sustain. Uh, sure, you know, the first few levels, they should be probably, you know, out damaging, maybe out laning a bit. But then once the other champion in their lane starts, you know, using their paws, because I'm sure they have him, or maybe Vladimir, who has, like, a lot of sustain, it is going to be a lot more difficult for the MF to keep up in, uh, you know, in lane sustain. For example, here, Vlad has his, you know, Q for, you know, already a lot of survivability and sustainability. Plus, he has three potions. So that right now, like, it might not be a huge thing. Like, right now, he should be, okay, he's missing quite a few farm. So that's obviously not something you know you want to do. You definitely want to get the first few for sure. But um, since he's gonna have those pots, it's gonna definitely play a huge part uh, later in like the lane sustainability because Vlad's gonna slowly harass him, and you know he's gonna harass back probably with a bit more damage. But then since he's gonna pot, that's what 200 HP over 20 seconds, which is like half his HP at the moment, which is a lot. And um, and he has nothing to regen his HP with. So once he gets to half or less, and Blast running around with full HP because he has pots, he's gonna get out of zone completely. So that's one thing you want to keep in mind um, when you lane middle or top and you run a Doran's item. Uh, this is why I usually don't enjoy Doran's unless it's a Doran's sh uh, 
ring or shield, depending on the character. If your character has a heal, then yeah, Dorn ring or shield isn't a bad idea at all. But for people that don't have any sort of heals, the, I don't recommend starting with a Dorn item. I recommend starting with maybe boots or something with some pots or maybe a cloth armor with pots, you know, stuff like that. So let's go in and see his CS. So the MF is at 8 CS, Vlad is only at 3. So clearly both players seem to be missing quite a few CS, especially the Vlad. Then again, a lot of the CS is just finally, you know, going to him. So, uh, so MF just missed like a couple more, I think. And, uh, so MF, you really need to abuse that passive she has. You need to really run around and, you know, try getting a few harass hits on Vlad if possible. Uh, maybe with a Q. And, uh, just, you know, all in all, you really need to make sure out of everything, like, if you have to choose between harassing and, uh, farming, like, if say you only have to choose one, you can only do one, you can't do the other. Definitely farming, absolutely no question. You you want to hit as many peeps as you can. If it means that you can miss one harass on Vlad, then it doesn't matter. As long as you can get all, every single or like maybe 90% of all the minions in your lane. Now, since Vlad is a ranged champion who also has great sustain, it's going to be a little hard for MF to uh, out uh, out harass him or out poke him. But um, there you go. Okay, so he's getting some of the CS. It seems uh, 15 CS to 12. Again, he did miss a few. He should be probably around 20-ish, 24 maybe, something like that. But nonetheless, he's getting, you know, a pretty good portion of them. Now. I think he missed that. I think he missed that. So you can't miss those kind of CS, like especially right there again. You cannot miss those. You have to really make sure you time them. And uh, I see he's using his Q a lot to last hit with. Now, I'm not sure why he's doing that. It's kind of a waste of mana. If he's using the Q to last hit and make sure that that Q jumps with Vlad, then yeah, absolutely. That's, you know, it's a great harass. That's what you should be doing with MF. But he's using the Q to last hit with. Now, um, unless you have two minions that are really low HP and you need to maybe auto attack one and then Q the other one to ensure you get both of them, yeah, absolutely, go for it. But if it's an easy last hit where you can just simply walk up and last hit him and you know, not worry about any other minions being too low for you maybe to miss them, then I don't see any point of wasting mana on your Q. That's just, you know, my little opinion. That's what I, you know, that's what I think. And, uh, oops. So their jungle right now, they have no jungle. Okay, never mind. Interesting. So they have two top offs. Kale's going to have a bit of work to do up there with an Alistair or Leona. Pretty good CC up there, so. But she's going to be ranged half the time, so it shouldn't be too much of a problem. She does have a heal. But who cares about Kale right now? It doesn't matter. So Udyr's jungling. So MF is chilling in the back right now. Uh, she has nothing to worry about jungle, so she can push as much as she wants, you know, get as many hits on the tower as possible. As long as the, uh, you know, lane's called the MIA, so Ali is missing an action, and he's being wise, you know, he's chilling in the back a little bit, uh, not, you know, playing too offensively, because, you know, he don't want to get first blood or anything, even though I'm pretty sure it's gone. Yeah, it's gone. But nonetheless, you don't want to, you know, give away unnecessary deaths, so that's pretty smart, chilling in the back like this, but I wouldn't stay, I wouldn't stay this far back. If I were him, I would definitely run up here, throw the E in the bush, just to check if anyone is in there or not, because he is missing quite a few CS, and you don't exactly want to miss CS, you know, if you can go get it. Um, because Alistair, if he chills down here, uh, Alistair will really have no way to get him, unless Alistair does a flash, which he has, um, which I'm not sure he would waste, because he does have his own flash himself. So if you chill down here, because Alistair, the only way he could go up is from probably one of these areas. So if you go around here and, you know, run around and get those last hits going, and Alistair just has to show up to gank with Vlad, as he is right now, as you can see. He did waste that flash. Uh, but yeah, exactly. He can just flash over, just like I said. So it's not much of a problem. Um, so that kind of worked out in a way, you know, pretty well. Now, sometimes what I like to do with MF uh, is just to use your ulti and farm this creep wave, because you're not going to be really going to lanes at the moment because uh, as an AD carry you really need to make sure you get as much farm as you can and you don't really want to get the creeps to the tower because that uh, just makes last hitting that much harder and sometimes even impossible so if I were her him I definitely would use my ulti to uh, clear the wave right there and uh, get every single creep there um, before he gets to the tower I think that would have been definitely you know a great idea to do alright so I think he got that one actually it's good um, you need to, one thing really to make sure you know how to do is uh, last hit with the tower. You need to kind of understand from, you know, this is all comes from experience, but you need to understand how much damage tower does to uh, the to the minions. Um, because uh, usually at this at this level, uh, to the melee minions, tower, uh, two hits, and uh, usually you can last hit after the tower does two hits on them, considering that, you know, minions obviously have full HP when they started getting hit by tower. Um, so again, he's playing safe, but I get, he's not using his E to check the bushes. That's the one thing he's not doing. I recommend he really does. You can easily run up here or run over here 
and uh, throw that E down over here and you know check if anyone's chilling in the bush waiting for that gank because uh, not that I blame him he is playing safe but he is at the same time playing a little too safe in the sense that he's missing a lot of CS um, you know because he thinks that Alistair might be waiting for a gank so you should definitely check the lanes you know check the uh, with your E skill because it does reveal bushes and uh, see what's up see what's any anyone's chilling there and uh, if I were him I would actually probably be right now because you know it's pushed in and uh, he's definitely going to have to be up quite a bit, so uh, I think right now would be a pretty good time for him to go back and buy. So I hope he's going to do soon. Or actually what I would do, I'll run up, ulti the wave, and then go back and buy. That would be a great move. I think it'll mess up that CS a bit because he's going to miss quite a few probably from the tower hitting the creeps. Uh, tower will take some damage from the minions as well. And he can go back and buy without really worrying about missing any you know much experience. Because uh, by the time he gets back, only a couple of creeps should have died. Because most of the minions just finished dying to the uh, tower. Um, also, one thing to note is that MF, I guess you can say, kind of counters Vlad. It's hard to say, because a good Vlad, I'm sure, can do some serious damage to her. But uh, she does have that uh, healing reduction. So uh, that does, you know, counter Vlad, kind of. Um, so uh, if they ever did fight, I'm sure he, sh he might be able to kill him. It's going to be a little difficult to tell, as long as Vlad doesn't get a, a full blood pool on, on top of him with the ulti. Then, you know, I might not be able to, but, uh... It, it, would, be, it would be a pretty close fight, I'd say. But, uh, he should definitely go back and buy. So, he's doing pretty good in lane. Now, this Vlad, if he was playing more smart, he would definitely be z trying to zone her out. He would definitely try being, you know, try, and, try to cue her a, a bit and, uh... Try to zone her out because when you, whenever I see, for example, I'm against like a MF or something middle that has a Doran's ring or sword or Doran anything, I'd really try out zoning them. And uh, that's a bad position right there for her. Uh, yeah, so they're still going for Udyr there, but um, let's say she's gonna get caught. Actually, his flash just got up, looks like. He should live if he goes back. I know he's gonna die. Okay, that's fine. But um, yeah, that was definitely bad positioning how he ran here. He just basically courted himself because Leona was here, Alistair was here, Vlad was here, and he just basically courted him himself in here. Definitely don't want to do that. He should have just ran up here. It would have been better. Uh, he would have got away uh, from that as well because uh, I'm pretty sure Udyr was dead. Nothing you could have done. So, he got BF sword first. I I don't know about... I really didn't know about rushing a BF like this. Because you're you're missing a lot of like survivability items, you're missing uh, you know extra move speed. Rushing BF first, I don't really like anymore. Uh, I'd rather get a couple of Doran's blades with the boots and you know a ward or two. I think that would've been a lot better of a buy than uh, just a straight BF. I mean he's gonna have pretty good damage, but think about it. BF gives him 45. This gives him 10 each. If he buys two more, that's 20 damage, which is about half of a BF sword. But he's gonna get. 200 more HP, he's gonna get 6% more life leech, he's gonna have boots, he's gonna have a ward, which is, I believe, you know, it's a lot better than just having a Dorans uh, or a, a BF sword. So that's something to keep in mind. Usually you don't want to rush a BF sword just like that. Um, it's better to get a couple Dorans and, you know, boots and wards and maybe a few pots if you can. Um, so that's something to keep in mind. Let's take a look at the CS, 56 CS. So he's definitely up above most of the people in the game. He's up by one over Vlad. Um, which really isn't, it's okay I guess, I mean, I think he should be a bit higher than that, than that maybe about like 5 or 6, just because as an AD carry it's a lot easier to last hit than, you know, with Vlad, so he should be able to uh, last hit a lot more uh, minions than Vlad can, while at the same time probably zoning him out with that Q properly. So Vlad is missing, I'm sure he's probably typing that, yeah. Um, so that's good, you know, he is calling the MIAs, Vlad is probably going bottom, so I probably would have pinged something bottom or something around here, because that's what seemed like where Vlad went. So, one thing to keep in mind also is, <coughs> see right here, no one's going to get a kill, no one's going to die, I th he shouldn't run here, he should just stay in the lane and push it, just push it really fast. Whenever my lane partner leaves, I always, always push my lane as fast as I can and put as much pressure as I can as on the, on the tower because uh, the faster you get this middle tower, the better it is because obviously getting towers is huge in this game. So this uh, Tarek is obviously dead, there's nothing you can do to live. Second, I have Vlad procs, yep. So again, you know, they're just running around, wasting time, not doing anything. So it's something you don't want to do. She should have just definitely stayed mid, just got that more CS, got damage on the tower because... Uh, so it looks like that she might get Vlad, nope, almost. <laughs> so Vlax did get that, Vlad you know, went in there, got it. So he's not... Okay, there you go. Looks like he mistargeted a bit there, but... Uh, 
They should be able to get the Sona if they play correctly. I mean, I don't see... If this Sona gets away, that will be pretty sad in my opinion. Um, I just don't see how she can get away. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Stun him, stun him, stun him, stun him, stun him. There you go. Get that Q on her. Okay, good, good. Um, that was a little close. Uh, she almost got away. So what I definitely would have done there is... Uh, see, if he had those boots, he would have caught up so much faster. And started applying that red buff on Sona. And, uh... But, you know, he did have a pretty good E there. You know, he did hit it. Um, so now is definitely a good cho uh, choice to take Dragon. Uh, most of the team is dead slash, you know, just getting out of base. So right now, this should definitely be able to get Dragon pretty quickly. I'm sure Tarek has a clear volume, So he should be able to clear points around this area pretty soon. To kind of ensure that no one is going to, you know, try and stopping them or anything. So there's a lot of minions here, so she should definitely go back in lane and farm. His tower is taking a lot more damage than their tower, which is definitely not a good thing. You always, you know, want to try getting as much damage to their tower as you can. Especially as an AD carry, I mean, you just want to stay in lane. You just want to farm away. That's what AD carries do. They just farm away hard, really hard. And uh, I'm not sure why she's running from her. She can definitely do some more damage to her with that W to Q. Uh, no matter for that, but still the Q with the red buff, you know, she can definitely do a lot more damage. So this tower is definitely gone. I don't see why they would stay. Um, that was pretty, pretty poor play. I don't see why they would stay with a tower that has that little HP left, especially with the announcer sitting there waiting to uh, you know, do what he just did. <laughs> that was a great sound ulti. Um, so I guess he, again, he was out of position a little bit. He should just kept running back, um, not standing there attacking. Sona got a free ulti on him, and uh, that definitely wasn't you know the best play. So this uh, Uri looks like he's gonna definitely die. <laughs> wow, no, he didn't lie, he did that. Okay. So he's getting the Vampiric Scepter, so obviously he's rushing for uh, the Bloodthirster. And he got a 50% dagger. I'm guessing he's gonna get a Phage or um, the Zeal after, I'm guessing. Uh, <coughs> Maybe he's getting a Black Cleaver first. I'm not sure what he's getting actually. He could be going for Black Cleaver or a BF. Or rather, a. What's it called? The Bloodthirster. So I guess we'll find out. Personally, on MF, I think uh, straight damage items like a BF Sword is definitely a great idea with uh, some attack speed. Um, so by now, the items I think would have been great for him would have been these boots for sure, two or three Dorn's Blades with, you know, the BF Sword and whatnot. So his item order isn't too bad, but he does have a lot of extra gold. He should have maybe got some pots or a ward or something. Um, but let's like he doesn't want to farm the butter. I'm guessing butter. So I'm not sure. But he's missing a lot of last hits, and that's not good. Uh, he he is missing quite a few. Uh, his CS isn't too bad. It's not good. It's not bad. If anything, it's a little more on the bad side. Um, 79 by 16 minutes as an AD carry. It's okay. I mean. Not something you would see, obviously, you know, high yield, low play, or anything, or like tournament play. Um, but, uh, it, you know, it's definitely, definitely something you can improve on, so keep that in mind. You can definitely improve on that. And I noticed he just last hits, oh, he doesn't last hit, sorry, he auto attacks a lot. He doesn't really run around, you know, going for those last hits. He just kind of, seems like he just hopes that his auto attacks will get the last hits for him. Which is not something you want to do. So HP is bugging out a little bit, can't even see their HP. There's Aliona. <coughs> It's done. So he just seemed like he whiffed his ulti there, which definitely isn't something you want to do. He's out of position. He's standing right beside uh, all the melee champions. You don't exactly want to do that. Um, so that's a good play right there. They got him. They should definitely finish off. Uh, it's hard to say who, but uh, you know, definitely finish off this Leona right now. I'm not sure why she's thinking she can do anything now. Yeah, she's definitely gonna die unless Terry can do some clutch heals or something. She has no mana for. Her. So it's hard, it's hard to say what she should have done there, but basically, number one, she did with her ulti, it seemed like over here. That's definitely not something you want to do. Because uh, her ulti is something that is a channel ulti, where um, if you're going to use it, you're going to want to make sure you use it properly. You want to make sure you hit as many things as you can, because you're just wasting time. Because you could have been just standing there auto-attacking instead, doing you know pretty good damage as well. Um, so yeah, that is one mistake definitely he did there. Another mistake is... Um, he was standing a little too close to all the champions. He should be kind of trying to kite them as much as he can. 
Because uh, that's, that's what MF does with that passive. She needs to kite as much as she can. So he did get that zeal. Now, I don't agree with that choice at all. If he's going to be rushing a Bloodthirster, he needs to be rushing that the first thing. Um, simply due to it because it's one of those items you need to stack up fast so that you can really start doing serious damage and people you know, will have a hard time killing you because of the damage you can output. Because uh, Bloodthirster is something you obviously need to keep stacked. Or else it's kind of a waste of an item. Compared to the other two BF swords you can get. So this Jax is in a bit of a pickle. <laughs> but you see, as they're chilling bot doing, you know, work on Jax, they should definitely be getting a tower, which they're not going to be able to because they're all going to appear right here and possibly going to I don't know, they should definitely back off. Not sure where, the, okay, there they are. This is interesting, so that definitely isn't something you want to do. That was very bad play. Um, you definitely don't want to start with an ulti like that, especially when you're one of the first targets that they can basically hit as they walk in, as you can see. He was basically the first target in their line. Definitely not want to do that, especially, you know, when in that position and you channel your ulti. So positioning is definitely something you can work on, but that's something everyone can work on. Positioning is definitely one of the harder aspects of this game to really get a handle on. I mean, I still have problems with it. Everyone has problems with it. It's basically what separates... You know, wins from losses. Just it's all the positioning, positioning, position, positioning, positioning. It's just it's the number one thing um, in team fights. Um, so that's definitely something he could have worked on there. Um, he was definitely out of position. Should have just ran back, and then possibly you know done his ulti. Maybe you know I would have done his. Uh, I would have ran back over here, pop my uh, E, pop my W, <coughs> and started popping a couple Qs and uh, auto attacking and then you know probably ulting because it looked like a pretty good chance to ulti. Um, that's probably what I, I would have done. But either way it seemed like it was a 4 on 5 I believe so not much they could have done either way. <coughs> he does have a buffer here so now what I would be telling Jax is that you know tell him to like F off or something because he obviously needs to get the stacks on this uh, buffer here like ASAP, he needs to get that thing stacked up to 40 damage, or 40 stacks fast, 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 fast it's really core the second you get it, you really need to go just come and just farm until you really have it stacked up it's really important you do that that's definitely what I've been telling this Jax, I definitely would not have went to help with the dragon, I would have stayed bottom, I would have kept pushing, I would have got you know all the CS I can and I would have told Jax to go help them I would have continued pushing that's what you should have done, uh, I believe because, um, you know, it's just a lot of CS you missed out on that, uh, you know, Dragon Help wasn't exactly necessary, they definitely had it, the enemy team was nowhere near to even stop it. So, um, really wasn't much sense in helping them with Dragon. Uh, so, um, his Bloodthirst is obviously not stacked, and probably, like, maybe it's only like a one quarter of the way, I'm guessing, somewhere around there. If you look at the CS, he's still a 98, so, um, by now he should be probably around 120 minimum, I'd say. 20 minutes in, yeah, minimum 120. <laughs> but that's fine, I mean, uh, you know, it's definitely something you can improve on, so, uh... Next time you play a Mephers or any AD carry, or any champion in general, other than maybe support, obviously, um, just really try to focus more on CS. Try to really understand when you should go and help your team, when you should go and, uh, try, you know, going for a gank, and when you should really just stay in your lane and get that CS going. So there is he, yeah, he's getting... Yeah, so they're, they're really just targeting him, that Alistair is playing really well, he's playing pretty solid. Yeah, you definitely ulti, but not with that Alistair ready to go back on you. It's kind of late, but um, it's hard for him to really do anything, because they have people like Leono and Alistair who just really jump on you and really just annoy the hell out of you and, you know, stun you, you know, basically keep you um, CC'd uh, as a, a ranged carry. So it's kind of annoying, but uh, it's just something that really makes you work on your positioning. It's definitely something you really just really need to make sure that you're always in the back as far as you can, and just wait for Alistair to jump in and use his Q and then, you know, really start going in and start doing some damage. Same thing with Leona, wait till she goes in and pops maybe her ulti uh, before you really start going in and start auto-attacking for the damage. Before that, just, you know, pop your E, maybe go in there, pop up Qs, a couple auto-attacks and then back off a bit. Um, you know, that kind of stuff. So you should be able to, yeah, definitely be able to get that. You know, it's not a problem. Um, yeah, I was going to say maybe you should have flashed, but yeah, that, that definitely would have been a bad idea. Probably would not have got him. Especially with uh, Sona over there healing, so that's you know smart play. Now he's getting the defensive items. Uh, I'm not sure why he's getting that item though. It seems like a lot of the damage being dealt to him is AP, because um, Vlad is seem seeming to be doing the most damage. Alistair's always on him, so he seems to be doing a lot of damage on him as well. 
And um, they're not going to get him, so I'm not sure why they're trying. But, um, yeah, I don't know why he was getting, he's getting a chain vest. Unless he's going for a guardian angel. <coughs> if I were him, I definitely would have probably started going for that Banshee's Veil. I think that would have been a pretty sweet item on him for this game. So let's fast forward this a little bit. See who gets this red. MF is, you know, pretty damn strong with the red, so I definitely recommend. Yeah, she gets it for sure. And uh, so when he died, his buttress of stacks definitely went away. So that's also one thing to really keep in mind. If you're going to be an AD carry who's going to be rushing buttressers, you really, really need to make sure your positioning is top notch. Because the enemy team, that all they have to do is target you. Not only are they going to target you because you're one of the targets that has to be targeted, but they're also targeting you to get rid of your stacks. So it's kind of a two-in-one deal for them if you think about it. And um, you, that's why if you get... It's kind of like a Majais in a, in a sense. Or any stackers, like an Occult or... Or um, you know the other one for the HP. It's just it's really something like if you're gonna get, you have to play properly and you have to play really safe and uh, have really good positioning to make sure you don't die. Because if you die, not only are you dying as a carry, but you're dying and losing your stacks. Something that you definitely don't want to do. <coughs> yeah, so this is definitely something that you can harass with. You know, throwing a few Qs with the W maybe. Let's see how this plays out. <laughs> yeah, see, so okay, that unfortunately both creeps, but you definitely want to keep harassing like that. She does have red buffs, so she, you know, not, nothing too much to worry about. They're not going to really die for her in a sense. Um, so, <coughs> yeah, I wouldn't chase. I definitely would not chase. Okay. Um, hmm. But yeah, so, she, you know, your range, you should definitely just get those uh, auto attacks going on them. Get that red buff, apply to as many of them as you can. You're just, Keep harassing them. That's a pretty decent ulti. Uh, got rid of a lot of the minions that you know could be doing a lot of damage to you, along with hitting quite a good portion of them. So that's definitely a pretty nice ulti. Um, I think this is the pentacle he was telling me about in the information. No, <coughs> yeah, so he's definitely chilling in the back, just doing all the damage he's doing. So that was pretty well play, played by him. Um, Obviously, it's because the tower was with them, but uh, again, he didn't have a pretty nice ulti at the beginning. He hit pretty, you know, pretty good portion of them. Like Caitlyn, for example, is one of the core ones he did hit. Um, so Sona is definitely something she should be able to catch, especially with this this passive. So that was pretty bad. I'm, I'm not sure why he would do that. Obviously, she's not in there, so uh, kind of wasting time. <coughs> but she she's definitely gonna die. There's no way she can get away. Now here's where you would a move, a move, a move. She's running through the bush, and uh, you know you don't want to exactly run through the bush and then try making sure you know you actually get the right click on her. So what you do is you press A and then you left click to the spot, and then anything. So you know as he was running here and someone was walking through the bush, as he was running here, you press A, click here like this. You see, it turns red. You click here, and then um, as you do that, anything that uh, any enemies you encounter through this path until this, your, your hero would automatically start attacking them. So that's something to really keep in mind to do when you run you know, or chase people through bushes so um you know definitely not not too bad play here he did get the guardian angel first and probably ensure that his buttresser stacks will stay stacked even if he dies once because they are going to be targeting him so it's not a bad idea um getting defensive items this quickly on an ad carry as long as you get something really strong like a buttresser that can give you pretty solid ad for a while while you know you're farming up that defensive item um, so it's not you know it's pretty good play now if he finishes off uh uh, if I were him, I would definitely go for like a probably um, Infinity Edge to a Zeal or um, Phage. I'm, what's it called? Phantom Dancer. And uh, if he gets those two items, like <coughs> that's honestly all the damage he's gonna be able to need. Um, yeah, so he's probably gonna die. It's a good save. Wow, that's a very good save. That's a good. Sh good shit. Good shit. Good shit. So that was a good save by um, Kale and uh, Tarek and even MF. You know, they definitely showed up at the right time. Helped them out. They uh, popped two ulties on him and he still lived, which is definitely a pretty big mistake on their part. The fact that they popped two ulties and he still gets away. You know, you want to do that. So this is a pretty good time for them to pop possibly go middle and start doing a push or maybe even get Baron. Because their enemy team obviously now is missing two ulties. Um, yeah, so they're missing two ulties, so obviously they're going to be down um, quite a lot of damage and CC in their uh, next team fight. So it's definitely something they have to keep in mind. Now Udyr should probably, yeah, definitely if he goes bottom, and uh, he's not going bottom, he's actually getting Dragon. Pretty poor play here. They can definitely get Dragon after, but Udyr should definitely go bottom and push that tower. He can easily get that tower because it seems like every single teammate is top. So, um, they, this team should have no problem defending. 
the tower, and Uja should have one bottom, and you know, easily picked up this turret. But uh, you know, it's whatever. So let's see what items he gets after. I'm a little curious to see what he decides to go. Yeah, exactly. So it is an AP Alistair. It's not even a tanky Alistair. It's an AP Alistair. And since he's out of position, uh, almost lost. Nice. That's a good try. See, if I were here, I'd probably pop Ghost there to ensure the uh, kill on um, Kaelin. But, you know, Uji or uh, Jax did seem to pop Flash and Q to ensure the kill. That's fine. So this Alistair does, does go in. He's probably going to do some pretty sweet damage. But uh, MF doesn't seem like anyone even caring about it right now. She's not being targeted at all. And uh, she's auto attacking Alistair, which is not something you want to do when he has his ulti on. She should have definitely went after probably the uh, Sona or, or the Vlad. But now that Alistair has an ulti, you should know, definitely pretty pretty easy target to kill now. Because um, he is going AP Alistair, so he is pretty, you know, damagey. Not something you want to keep around often. Yeah, so it does look like he's getting that uh, Phantom Dancer. Alright, so they should definitely pick up these kills here. I don't see why they wouldn't. <coughs> so the one's getting some pretty nice ultis in, but I mean that should be nowhere near enough to stop them from uh, getting possibly the Sona as well. Yeah. The last person top, so I was pretty smart play by Vlad. But he is probably gonna die. Definitely <coughs> or he might actually get away now. Okay, good. So I believe he has enough for his uh, Phantom Dancer, so he should definitely go back and get it, I'd say. If I were him, what I would I would have done is I would have <coughs> not got this dagger, and I would have just got another BF Sword. Because he can keep Zeal at the moment, I mean, it's enough to, you know, give him what he needs right now. And that was pretty poor play, I'm not sure why he would do that. I'm sure this Udyr's in there, I thought this Udyr's going to rage on him. Um, I'm not sure why he took that blue. Definitely other people that can use him more than him, like a Kale or the Udyr. Or the Terry, almost anyone on, the, on his team, rather than him, to be honest. Fast forward this a little bit. Yeah, so you got that phage going. I'll definitely get a red pot or something. <coughs> so he did get the pickaxe. Now, what could he be building this into? Probably, I'm guessing the Infinity Edge, but we'll find out. <coughs> but I wouldn't have sold it to get just the pickaxe. I would have definitely got a pot and kept that door blade. So Vlad is clearly their highest damage probably, so that's probably the priority that they should be getting. Uh, you know, he should be able to, you know, definitely the first one to uh, start attacking and um, especially with the MF applying that W debuff on him. That should be pretty, in a sense, shut down in terms of uh, regeneration from Sona and himself. <coughs> so he's getting the Sona first. It's not a bad idea. Not a bad ulti either. So I'm not even sure, he's like in the middle of everything. Um, luckily for him, they're not targeting him. But uh, you definitely want to be in the middle of everything like that. Just take unnecessary damage, but uh, for some reason like, the enemy team is not targeting him at all. Probably thinking that he has that Guardian Angel so they don't, don't want to target him because it's just going to revive. 
But you do have to get rid of MF. That's one of the first people to get rid of, for sure. That's for the slow Definitely still didn't get this guy. Yeah, so they got that Baron. It's good. <coughs> yeah, so this Uyghur is definitely caught out of position. Still gets away. Now, if I were them, I'd definitely go away. I'll probably go buy some items. Everyone, you know, let everyone heal up and then meet up again. Um, okay, well, actually, in this case, probably fight. Um, that's a great pickup. Great CC before you can even get his ulti off. So that's, you know, great play there by his team. Good damage, good everything. <clears throat> they should definitely push middle and just possibly get an inhibitor. This is with the MF, they should have to push towers with that. Now, they're wasting time with blue. It's good, but they have Baron, and I think they should be. I'm a little confused as to why they're backing. Uh, they can easily push middle and get that tower. <coughs> Alts are still dead. As long as they get at least maybe top tower. I mean, they have to get at least one tower after that. That's just ridiculous if they don't even get a tower. Yeah, they don't even get a tower. That was very poor play, I believe, on, on the whole team as a, as a team. Um, they picked up an Alistair. They have Baron and they didn't do anything with it. So, not sure why. It looks like Jax has the right idea. <clears throat> she got that red, that's good. Last Whisperer, okay, so let's go through the items. Only tanky person on their team at the moment, Leona with 137 armor. The rest of the team doesn't have all that much armor. For example, Alistair, not much armor. 64. Vladimir, nothing defensive. Kaylin, nothing defensive that gives her armor either. <coughs> so that's Whisper, definitely wasn't the best choice at all. So, um, definitely disagree with that. Easily could have got us something like an Infinity Edge and done some serious damage to people that don't exactly have much armor to penetrate through to begin with. Only person she can really put, use that to its full effectiveness is on. Uh, Leona, who really shouldn't be targeting right now. Usually you only get an item like my Last Whisper when you, uh, an like enemy team has like two or, th you know, minimum like three people I'd say, or more, who are, you know, stacking up that armor, going, you know, pretty defensive. You have to keep in mind that it is a 4 and 5 right now. And that was a really, really... Probably a misclick by Kale there. That ult See, he's running in again. He's, he can't run in like that. He's just... He, uh, uh, he runs in a lot of the times onto the team. <coughs> so you can definitely throw in a few Qs in here because they have nothing to stop him right now. Everyone that has CS is you know, in the back. Funny. So, um, hmm. You just got a pentakill. That's pretty funny. Uh, I mean, it was a good play. Just the enemy team, they're just, they don't seem to focus him a lot. Like, they don't seem to even care about him. Enemy team just keeps focusing people like the Uri and the Jax. Especially the Uri. They're focusing the Uri a lot. Uri is always like the lo lowest HP. I'm not sure why. This should definitely get this tower quickly. And now probably get back. Actually they can easily fight this, yeah definitely. <coughs> yep, 
pick up a pillow here. Oh yeah. <coughs> now, I wouldn't recommend going back. I mean, they can probably go and do something. <coughs> oh yeah. Definitely get that harass going. I'm not sure why they're targeting Leona. Definitely, you know, targeting that lad. There you go. <laughs> so I'm actually a little surprised that they don't finish it here. <laughs> Enemy team doesn't have much they can stop with. I'm with right now. <coughs> Especially with the damage, and they still have like, a lot of the CC they need. Uh, if they played this right, I'm, I think they might have been able to finish it or probably, you know, get a turret at least. Yeah, 223 CS. Not too bad. Forty minutes in as a AD carry, though. You know, by now, I, I 300 would have been you know pretty good. 300, I think, would be similar. You know, you'd want to sit out you know right now. Um, but he does have a lot of gold. He's got a lot of kills and a lot of assists, so. Kind of makes up for his uh, a little bit of lackluster CS, not too much though. So, <clears throat> I'm not sure why this Jack to take it. That was really, that was really stupid of him. <coughs> Let's see what he gets now. Definitely get that at Infinity Edge if I were him. Yeah. Uh <coughs> Yeah, that was really, really, really poor play by Jax. That probably cost him the game if I am it really could cost him the game right now. Just that was, I'm not sure why he would <coughs> It's a good try. This should definitely get out of there. Yeah, not much they can do right now. They should just left. Um, definitely don't want to. You know, after after he missed that steal on Baron, they should just back off simply due to uh, you know it's a four on five from then on. You miss the steal, then just get back. You know, just go under your turrets and defend. That's all you can really do. Um, last thing you need to do is really just try and fight them and think you can win a four v five somehow, considering none of them are even low HP. They have Baron and. Um, So over all in all, that was probably Jax's fault. I think he just cost him the game with just that one mistake, and that was a pretty big mistake. To be honest. So it does look like that might be game actually. Jax's old man, that was a huge mistake. They were way ahead. Well, I wouldn't say way ahead, but they, you know they were definitely up in team fights. I mean, they they were like winning the majority of the team fights. So, you know, from the around this point. <clears throat> So yeah, now that she dies, Jeff definitely has to get that Bloodthirster back up in uh, stacks. I'm not sure if it's up, I didn't check. <coughs> I 
They still have Baron though. What, what happened? Oh, this is what he told me in the, in the thing, I think. Uh, how uh, everything just stopped moving for a bit and then they pushed and finished something. Like he told me this happened. Let's see if we can fast forward this maybe. It's like a dance party. Look at Kale go. <laughs> Method's just shaking that. Vlad is like doing some trippy shit. So, uh, I didn't think the game would stop from this though. Not sure how long this lasted. He didn't mention in the email how long this lasted for. Um, the reason I, I chose this one is because he said it was his first ranked game and it's a MF carries. There we go. Whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah, so unfortunately, here game did freeze. So that's it, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, next episode will be out soon. Don't forget to send your replays in. And I will see you next time. Peace. Oh, the game's not... I thought it closes. Oh, my fraps are still running. Oh, what do you know? Okay, uh, <laughs> I tried rushing everything in because I thought the fraps starts, stops recording when the game finishes for some reason. Um, so that's it for this video, guys. Um, it was the first episode, so uh, you know, don't forget to, in the comments, write... I want you guys to write this. I want you guys to write what you think were... Uh, you know, that this player could have improved on as an MF player, as an AD carry. And I also want you guys to maybe write anything I could have improved on in terms of, you know, commentating over this. Maybe something I can talk about, something I shouldn't talk about, you know, stuff like that. So this is the first episode. I'm, you know, open to uh, suggestions as to what you think may improve this uh, series. And I uh, hope you guys really enjoyed it. I hope you guys maybe learned something. Don't forget to send in your replays. And I will definitely see you guys for the next episode. Peace.